some chart topping pops on Jess Glynn, everybody. Yeah. But first, the star of Benidorm and still open all hours is quite simply one of the funniest men in Britain. It's a huge pleasure to welcome back Mr. Johnny Vegas. Silent Fitness is currently playing a feuding neighbour with Johnny in BBC One's new sitcom, Home From Home. Please welcome Emilia Fox, everyone! Ooh. Looking good! And the pop, pop of colour. Yeah. Lovely to see you, have a seat, too! And from Green Wing to episodes, he's played everyone from Adrian Mole to Tony Blair and is one of the country's favourite comic actors. Please welcome Mr Stephen Mangan! Welcome all. Now, before I do another thing, I should just say, uh, if you are an Amy Schumer fan and you tuned in expecting to see her tonight, apologies due to ill health. Uh, she wasn't able to join us this time round. So now... Uh, well, after... she was, but then I created <laughs> a situation. Yeah, she's backstage I made crying. a phone call. And, yeah, yeah, she's not well now. <laughs> but I'm here <laughs> to replace her. Yeah. Br her? Britain's answer to Amy Schumer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. Often, uh, when I have guests on the show, I say, do you know each other? But it, it takes on a, an added thing tonight because, Stephen, you're not very good at meeting kind of well-known people. On the show, you talked about meeting Robert De Niro, but it's happened to you with other people as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the De Niro one was embarrassing. I met De Niro I, I, at a party. I saw him across the room. I thought, I've got to go and say hello to him. I got my courage up. I walked over and I said, hello, I'm Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I'm Robert De Niro. Uh, I, I was walking along the Strand in London, I saw a woman across the street, and I ran over and went, hello! And she looked at me blankly. I said, we've worked, I know, you, you, we did a, you, were we at Salisbury together? We did a, did you do a play with me? You're Meg Ryan, aren't you? And she went, yeah, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Coming around the corner of the theatre, I saw a woman, I thought, I know her, I went, hello! And my brain, the voice inside my head went, that's Madge from Neighbours. <laughs> so I just carried on walking past her with my hands in the air, as if I meant it. Hugged Horrible. a stranger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Emilia Vox, uh, you have, well, hot-footed it from a slam. <laughs> yeah. You're making Silent Witness yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't realise this is going to be series is 22. Series 22. Wow. Series I know. 22. Yeah. I mean, are you basically a forensic expert now? Could you do an autopsy? Do you know, the shameful thing is, is that all the years I've done this is my 14th year, I probably could be a pathologist by now. In fact, we were laughing today at some of the things that we had to say over the years. And, um, and some of them are just funny words that you have to say, but with a very serious face. Like, um... Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, he's died of schistosomiasis. <laughs> you say that? And then I've had one absolutely death sentence, which I have to really think about remembering this. It was um, a high binding affinity with alpha-2 adrenergic and M1 muscarinic receptors. That's <laughs> odd. Do you get letters from people kind of going, I don't mean to quibble, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I literally I had a sleepless night about that sentence and now it is seared upon my brain and has been for many years. And you've talked about how uh, difficult it is for the extras sort of yes. the, the playing corpses on yes. the slabs because they fall asleep and get erections and things. But uh, <laughs> you, uh, I'm so annoyed this didn't happen because, Johnny, you were nearly a corpse in Silent Witness, weren't you? I was, yeah. 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 Nearly. Nearly. Oh, Not when I was there. I, I was at an auction. <laughs> and they actually auctioned off the opportunity to play a corpse in Silent Witness. <laughs> that is a brilliant, brilliant auction Great prize. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You don't want something signed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be dead before my time <laughs> and hear what people say about me. <laughs> um, I, the price kept going up and there was a guy and he, was, he, was, he, he owned quite a bit of land and he started giving me dirty looks and you're going, look, it'd just be really funny if you didn't know. Oh, it'd be brilliant. I mean, before we worked together. Yes. But I just wanted you to come in and have one of those words where you go, he's obviously died of... Schistosomiasis. <laughs> <laughs> or overeating. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, 
if, if I can come on set and okay. just be a corpse without you knowing. Yeah, don't let me Can know. I please? Yeah, there are always pranks going on. Well, no, because um, corpses are hard. Because, like, Stephen, you haven't played a corpse, have you? I haven't played a corpse, but, but I, I've been in plays where you have to be dead. Or <laughs> I, I did The Tempest, and the, a spell is put on several of us, and we lie on the stage. And there are a few older actors, in the, and it's a long time you're lying there. <laughs> And after a heavy week, it's tempting to go to sleep. <laughs> and the guy to my right one, one sh show, while he was supposed to be under a spell, we suddenly got, oh, bollocks. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. First product tonight is Stephen Maggot's new series, Hang Ups. Uh, it's going to be on Channel 4 later in the year. But, uh, but it's all... You've done it, haven't you? We've done it. You've done it's it. Delivered. It's delivered. And uh, so this... If people saw Lisa Kudrow's series, Web Therapy... Th so what is it? Is, this isn't a remake, but it's sort of based on Yeah, it's on not it. a remake. The, the central premise is the same, that it's a therapist giving therapy sessions online. And you're the therapist. And I'm a therapist. Um, but otherwise, it's almost entirely different to the way they did it in America. I saw the show in America. I realised it was an opportunity to, to uh, use improvisation in a way that isn't normally used, because I've done a lot of shows where you use it to write scripts, Alan Partridge and Green Wing yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But um, it was a chance, basically, to get the fine... I think the, one of the best casts uh, you'll see no, no, in this any is, show. This thing is so starry. You two are too expensive. Yeah. But otherwise, the yeah. best comic actors... Yeah. It, uh, give us some of the names. I mean, uh, yeah. We've got David Tennant. Yeah. Charles Dance, Jessica Hines, Catherine Parkinson, Richard E. Grant. Uh, we've got Kevin Eldon, Ian Hart. It goes on and on. <laughs> I could go. I could be here for hours. Uh, okay, we've got a clip. And uh, although you are a therapist, this is you talking to your therapist. Is that right? Yeah. And your therapist is played by the great Richard E. Grant. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Um, so yeah. So um, my dad rang again and just, uh, you know laid an enormous turd uh, across my face. And how does that make you feel? I feel like a, a small fleck of shit on my father's shoe, in that he never actually sees me, but I irritate him. I'm there somewhere, and he would like to get rid of me. I'm just this irritant in his life. You've got very, very agitated. Yeah. Your breathing has got very agitated, almost to a sexual level. Do you feel any kind of sexual impulse or arousal when discussing your father? No, my cock goes in when I discuss my father. That just works. It goes back. OK, I'm going to ask you something. Yeah. That may be a little off-piste. Can you, with your right hand... Yeah. ...cup your genitals and just hold them? Outside the trousers or inside? Outside the trousers. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Better. And because it's improvised, we don't know what he's going to come up with. He is filthy, that man. It's just a wall of hilarious filth. So that is that. So that's all improvised. Yeah, there's no script at all. At all. At all. Oh, I assumed. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, we yeah. don't. We don't improvise to get a script. We turn up. He's in one room. I'm in the other. They switch the cameras on. We're doing it live, and we just start talking. And that is the kind of stuff we have to, have to deal with. <laughs> on a but everyone who did it. Because it's quite a scary thing to turn up on a, for a day's yeah. filming and not know what you're going to do. And I think everyone, without exception, came in terrified and left really enjoying it. But also because it's fake therapy, yeah. which could become real yeah. quite quickly. Do you then think to yourself, oh, if I went to a therapist, what would I talk about? W what would my hang-up be? Do you have a thing in your head <sighs> that you kind of thought, in the improvisation, I mustn't bring this up? Yeah. <laughs> I have a few. I mean, I don't... This is... I don't know if any, it's, it's not. This is not funny at all. But sometimes when I'm walking downstairs with my baby or a small child, I worry. I, I, I envisage that I'm going to fall or fall on it or accidentally throw it over the balcony. I don't know why you'd do that. And I just want to make it clear I've never thrown any children over any balconies. <laughs> but I have these mad thoughts that something terrible is going to happen. So maybe I'll bring that up. Is that irrational? That I sounds feel like I'm in therapy. No, now. that sounds quite rational. Being is scared it? of dropping your baby. But also not. But suddenly just doing something that's not rational. Like right, stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> I want to throw the baby. Graham. I hate it! It's ruined my life! Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amelia, now you have a thing, it's, it's, about, uh, it's about pottery. Mine's about flower pots. I don't like touching. I've got a phobia about touching unglazed pottery. Oh! Unglazed pottery, Amelia! <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we can all relate. No, but like flower pots. <laughs> and, no, and, no, but uh, and you, are you afraid buttons? of them? Yes, I am. I don't. I mean, afraid. Like I don't run away from flower pots, <laughs> but I just don't want to pick them up. What do you do? Do you scream? Do you come out of sweat? <laughs> Greenhouses are stay away I just from them. stay away from them. Right, yeah. I don't fling them over. Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's fundamentally it's unglazed terracotta. Yeah. Got to tell you, you this. You know lots about pottery. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did a degree. <laughs> it's unglazed terracotta and it lets the soil breathe. Right. And for garden pots, it's, it's sometimes essential. <laughs> a, pot the, a pot in the garden with a glaze on it is actually doing more harm to the plant than an unglazed pot. <laughs> you know nothing. <laughs> Well, 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 <laughs> but what about when we were in the hot air balloon, though? Yeah, Talking that, of fear. That's not phobias. a phobia, that's sheer fear. I don't like heights. <laughs> we were stuck in I, a hot... Well, I mean, we weren't stuck because it was an amazing trip in a hot air balloon together. I was stuck. On home. You were enjoying it. <laughs> Johnny just sank lower and lower and lower <laughs> in the basket <laughs> until we were like, Johnny? Has Johnny thrown himself out and he was sitting at the bottom? And I didn't realise how bad vertigo can be because you were worried that I was going to... Yeah, the, the worst thing with it, I'd never done it before and I went up Table Mountain and I'd never suffered vertigo. And I, got, I was finding the cable car, I had something to hold on to. I got out and I just turned into... I can best describe it as like Spider-Man looking for a contact lens. <laughs> 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 and I started making these noises I'd never made before, going... <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone went near the edge, I had this, like, throwing the baby... Yeah. ..that they were just going to, like, a gust of wind was going to take them over, and you're going... <laughs> <laughs> Were you filming in it, or were you just on a pleasure trip? <laughs> no, we were filming, but they went, oh, we'll get you in our table, and they went, no, really, I've just had a bad experience, and I've realised I've got vertigo, and it won't be fun for me. And they all went, oh, won't that be hilarious? And we went up in the balloon, and it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and you kept leaning hilarious. over. Uh, it wasn't hilarious. I... <laughs> to, to the point that I almost wanted to tip you out. <laughs> <laughs> This is where my fear is based. <laughs> you don't have to lean that far. You're in a basket and we're... I'm not good at maths. We're millions of miles in there. <laughs> That's what was going through my head. Because some of the things struck me, because all of you are parents, and I think one of the... Th I'm sure there's lots of issues when you're a parent, but one of the things, I think, is that you don't want to feel responsible for your children ending up in therapy. Because is that a concern where you kind of think, oh, I better not do that because... Oh, every time you do anything that you think's wrong, you think, that's it, that's 16 years of therapy. <laughs> They're going to have to get over that one incident. <laughs> that's happening. I mean, I once said to my son when he was about four, I said, do you know why Daddy wears this? And he said, is it because you hate yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I know, why are you being the therapist here? <laughs> Lots of, where had he heard that? Yeah, where had he heard that? <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in terms of lazy celebrity parenting, you, Stephen, have a genius uh, thing that you've done. Have you done it with all your children or just one? Just the first one, because, like, the shame was too much afterwards. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to... I've done a lot of audiobooks. And I've done a lot of fairy stories. So, occasionally, if I was really busy, I'd put my child to bed and then reach over and put in a CD <laughs> of me reading a fairy story. <laughs> and I'd press play and then just back out the door. <laughs> Until he was about seven, he thought every story started with, read by Stephen Mankin. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. You were present. Now, uh, three actors here tonight, and last week, I don't know if you saw this on social media, it was old headshot day, and it was <laughs> actors would, uh, were posting their kind of first headshot. Uh, now, did any of you join in, or am I just going to bully you into doing it now? You're going to bully me into okay, doing it now, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Stephen Mangan, I have to say, Stephen, you, you, sir, have aged very, very well. <laughs> Your headshot has not. Oh. <laughs> here you are. <laughs> What's terrifying about that is not only at some point in my life do I look at that and go, yeah. 
<laughs> but also, when you get a professional picture taken, as you'll know, they give you about 60 to choose from, and I chose that. <laughs> Did you ever work when you looked like that? You, no, not even as a corpse. <laughs> Imagine when your children see that. They are never going to see it, ever. <laughs> I will lose all did, my authority did overnight. Did you solve any mysteries on the magic roundabout? Hey, this is Johnny Vegas. Oh, no, don't, don't. This is your very, 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 oh, very first don't. publicity shot. This is the one you... Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> um, but you you put that on business cards, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah. I was what was the in... business? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to keep my options open. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're trying to keep your flies shut. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I lived in a bed set and my landlord, um, I, I owed money. And I asked him <laughs> if I could pose in front of his, his Mustang or whatever American card it was. And I, I just thought it was <laughs> different from the straightforward, you know, print a business card up at the service yes. station on the machine. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Amelia Fox, we looked high and low for an early headshot of you. Oh, and, no. and we did eventually find one. Oh, no. We found this one. Awful... Uh, oh, on no. eBay. <laughs> it's on eBay. I don't know. Well, not, have we bought it? <laughs> no, we didn't buy it. <laughs> but, we didn't buy it. That's we just, free. Uh, yeah. No, it's not free. It's one ninety nine. <laughs> Seriously, it is one if you want it. It's one ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, we've also got this is my first. This is my spotlight. You know the spotlight. The, it's the yeah. directory of actors. So what's weird about this is it looks like it was a hundred years ago that I looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that long ago. That's I've just fucked myself up. Really. <laughs> You, you know, funny hair, but you look kind of the same. You, you, were, you were slightly older than that when I worked at Argos and you was in a safety training video. <gasps> the one with the boxes? Yes! Oh, my God! I just said, watch you going, <laughs> and now... <laughs> Don't I be see. making an idiot of you. Oh! I loved your phone's tumble. No, no, because I then had to be dead. Yeah! Yes! There you go! Why the corpse? I was! Why, 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 is, why, is, there, why is there a corpse in Argos? Heavy boxes! Heavy, Heavy boxes. boxes! And they cater for every gift idea. <laughs> right. I think they use a real ambulance in the thing, and we were told we need to be quick because if a call comes in, that ambulance has to go. <laughs> anyway. On the subject of publicity pictures, uh, Stephen and Johnny, this is a weird coincidence. Uh, you have both done a parody of the pregnant Demi Moore post from Vanity Fair. Now, here's Stephen, looking good. <laughs> a, great, beautiful. Be beautiful. It's beautifully lit. It's it gorgeous. Is, yeah. It's really nice. Happy enough. memories. She's 12 now, that child. <laughs> <laughs> and again, also beautifully lit, here is Johnny. The portrait gallery. Um, unfortunately, I had no need for prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all you. Thing is, I look like I wanted to get pregnant. <laughs> I think in mine, you look like it was just a one night stand. <laughs> lose it. I look like I had a connection with the father. Look at that. <laughs> I'm proud. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care if it happened in the car park. I'm keeping this. <laughs> Whereas you, you look like you can't tell the family. <laughs> Why is Stephen gone away for nine months? Oh, I don't know. He's on an extended spring break. Uh, Amelia and Johnny. Amelia, See, Amelia and no, Johnny. Amelia no, and Johnny. You. Was, you. No, you. Shut up now. You. Okay. Amelia and Johnny. I'm Could sorry. It look like Amelia something? and Johnny. <laughs> Amelia and Johnny are starring together in the new BBC sitcom <laughs> Home From Home. It runs on Friday evenings at 9.30 <laughs> BBC One. Now, we're halfway through. There's three more to go. So if people haven't seen it yet, what have they missed? Who are you? What's the vibe? Tell us. OK, so Johnny... You're really succinct <laughs> and I'm annoyed. <laughs> Johnny plays Neil Hackett and, is this fair to say, the dream come true is that you have bought a lodge um, on a holiday park in uh, uh, the Lake District. We bought the worst lodge. The worst lodge. Um, and I play Johnny's neighbour, Penny Dillon, 
and I'm there with my husband and daughter and we have a very opposite kind of lodge which is a luxury lodge with a hot tub and all of that and uh, it's really about our <laughs> holidays and how we coexist badly together. It's, it's about, uh, you know, the, the, the notion of classless Britain which doesn't <laughs> exist <laughs> and you are the snob, your husband's adorable but I see in him everything that I'll never be and the inverted snob in me wants to compete constantly. We have open battles, yeah. but everything that goes wrong is because I'm battling with her husband, who, who Adam James, just plays the perfect kind of wannabe guy. He does. And um, I wake up to this. Uh, listen, we've got a clip. This is from next week's show. This is uh, you guys uh, basically choosing your dinner. <laughs> I don't think we managed to get through that ever without one of us collapsing with laughter, did we? No, the, the corpse in was, was mighty. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, you know, because, because it's a real, what do you call it? Is it a chalet park? Is it a... No, it's, it's, a, it's a holiday park. park. Yeah. A holiday park. It, yeah, and it's lodges. And let's be specific about that. <laughs> Thank you, Hillcroft. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even look into the camera. I looked at the telly. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked like I was having a stroke then. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to make a point and say thank you to someone, <laughs> sincerely, look down the camera. <laughs> um, um, but you became you know, quite I'm, famous. The bit we filmed it was Millionaire's Row, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, that, that's where the lodges get better in certain parts of the park yeah. as you go up. And where we, where we shot, we, we actually, do you know what I mean? We, we had, I mean, there's people there, they've got four golden retrievers. <laughs> You don't even need them. <laughs> you can just afford them. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they don't want to walk them, someone else will. <laughs> but you've had an extraordinary honour in the Cumbrian yeah. chalet world. Oh, I did. I, I opened, and again, but, uh, <laughs> Hillcroft, thank you for giving me the opportunity <laughs> for opening your state-of-the-art new shower block. <laughs> And for the huge pair of novelty scissors <laughs> that you actually gave me in a presentation box to take away. <laughs> Should I need to open supermarkets or anything else in You open the shower block? No, he's not making it up. Look, here's the plaque. Steve. Here's the plaque. Did you... Did you... <laughs> you get to take the first shower. Stephen, look, like you wouldn't if you were... Of course I would. You, Hillcroft, if you're listening. <laughs> Throw my hair. He's, uh, he's with it. But that's a self is that a selfie, the picture of you with the plaque? Y yes. And <laughs> unfortunately, Hillcroft, you put the plaque on the uh, wall that's the entrance to the women's shower block. <laughs> so I went up there to take a selfie. <laughs> As I was pausing and taking the photo. There was a guy leaving with a caravan and he just slowed down and went, you wait, <laughs> pervert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now, I don't want to make assumptions. I'm guessing, uh, Amelia and Johnny, you probably had quite different childhood holidays. Amelia, I'm imagining brass rubbing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no going away. No going away? No. My parents didn't go away at all. We didn't go abroad. Okay. As a child. Did you go on holidays at all? Um, only to Dorset. Okay, but didn't you live in Dorset? Yes. <laughs> 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 I went to school in Dorset, but I was also holidaying in Dorset, yeah. Wow. They really fooled you. Wow. <laughs> We're on holiday. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> We're on holiday forever. <laughs> None of that packing. No. Uh, it's all here, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. Stephen's had travel traumas, ladies and gentlemen. That was it. It was in Israel. I just think, oh, going to Israel, I've never been before, um, and I, you, when you get to Stansted, it's very, you have to go through security before you even check in. And there was a, a young woman there, about 20, with a massive machine gun. And she stopped me and said, you, what's your name? I said, Stephen Mangan. She said, what do you do? I said, I'm an actor. She goes, what type of actor? I said, of television, of film. <laughs> Did you go to drama school? Yeah. Which one? RADA. How did you get into RADA? <laughs> well, I did some auditions. What? 
Well, you do a Shakespeare and a, and a modern piece and a song. <laughs> what song did you do? <laughs> so I did Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. <laughs> and we saw it, well, how is this a security? She says, no, I, it's not a security, I want to be an actress. <laughs> Uh, see, we must mention, you've got another drama. It's currently playing on BBC One, The Split. It's on Tuesdays at 9, Nicola Walker. So you know it's good, because Nicola Walker's in it. Yeah, she's yeah. great. Yes. So the idea is you both play divorce lawyers. We're divorce lawyers, we're married, uh, and it's by Abby Morgan, who's a great writer. Um, and it's a drama. I get to do a bit of drama. Proper yeah. acting. Rada acting. Well, yeah. Yeah, I hope the woman from the Israeli uh, <laughs> security forces is watching. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a tense... We have a good marriage, or do we? <laughs> and at the moment, everyone thinks she's going to sleep with the very tall, handsome Dutch guy. <laughs> yeah, no, someone was very excited by that prospect. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, it's going to get a lot more interesting. Than that. But you were going to be a lawyer. Yeah, well, I did a law degree. Uh, oh. nev I never was going to be a lawyer. I mean, I knew quite early on I didn't want to be a lawyer, but I stuck with the degree. Uh, so, if you need any help, anybody... Um, I, I was like that with ceramics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, it's, it's a pretty bit... pretty much knew there wasn't a strong income, but I stuck with my degree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, there are four more episodes of The Spit to Come, and, of course, the first two, they're available on iPlayer now. Hurrah for the iPlayer. You don't miss a thing. You don't miss a thing. You don't miss a thing. <laughs> uh, right, it's time for music. Uh, this Grammy Award winning singer has had more number one singles than any other British female artist. Here with the first exclusive performance of her new single, I'll Be There. Please welcome Jess Glynn. <laughs> Like yours is the only heart to break. And when you come back home and all the lights are out, and you're getting used to no one else being around. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You are good. That was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. Loved it. Uh, that single, that single was brand new, exclusive, just out today. Yeah, like your first performance, like nerve wracking. But what? we're here. We did it. But you nailed it. That means <laughs> proper hard song. I mean, you know, for a song you wrote, one. you kind of like you wrote it quite a hard song. I know. <laughs> I can't grieve in it, but it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you did it. And this year, this is Year of the Glynn. Is it? Uh, well, because you've been away. I mean, I don't feel <laughs> like you've been away, but 2015 was the first album. Yeah, it was. It feels, yeah, wow, yeah. Yeah, it's 2018 now. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Worked a bit harder. <laughs> um, <laughs> what have you been... <laughs> it's quite nice sitting next to someone who has the same time lapses. <laughs> <laughs> but what have you... What, did you just have a nice time, or...? So what happened was, um, I released the album, and then I was on the road for, like, a good two years. OK, that's working. Yeah, so that was yeah. a lot of work. Um, and then... The past, like, six months to a year, I have been chilling a little bit. Yeah. And then writing again. And do you, like, when you say chilling, do you mean, like, are you having a laugh or are you just watching daytime telly? <laughs> yeah, like, having a laugh, going to the pub, seeing my family and my friends. Live, work, up. balance. Live, yeah. work, balance. It's important, yeah. Yes, and maintaining your hair. Yeah, uh, that, really... <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how you do it. That's a yeah. life work. <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's what you were aiming for. That's what I was going for. That's what you were going for. Hey, do you know, if you, if you had, you know, if someone on this panel had chosen yeah. a different life path, you could have been doing a collaboration with them. Because, as Stephen Mangan, music was yeah. your first love. Oh, wow. Yes, it was my first love, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was you a were band. In a, but in a proper band. <laughs> yeah, in a band, Aragon, we were called. Aragon? We made Aragon with the side O-T in the end. Oh, right. <laughs> or the beginning. <laughs> Um, Aragon. Yeah. 
did you, did you come on with a mighty song? We had an, we had an album called The Wizard's Dream. Oh! <laughs> three, three songs on it. One was called The Dragon. It was 15 minutes long. <laughs> That's serious. Yeah, well, it is. If you, we did it in someone's garage in, in Surrey, you know, it wasn't exactly well, Sussex. It wasn't exactly. Because we did look for it, we couldn't find it. You'll never find it. <laughs> <laughs> where did you put it? Where did it go? It never went anywhere. <laughs> where it got lost in the midst of time, right. like the dragon. <laughs> Were you in another band as well? Yeah, enormous Derek. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three of us. And none of us were particularly tall. <laughs> Enormous dick. I have no idea. It sounds like the school told you you couldn't be called enormous dick. <laughs> 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 yeah, enormous I have Derek no idea why I was called enormous Derek. All I know is that I had two keyboards and I put one there and one there. <laughs> and I played them like that. That's all I know. And was like that when you had the hair? Yeah. Oh, oh. genius. Genius, genius, genius. Hair. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other reason why it's Year of the Glynn right. is because there is another album coming out later in the year. There is, yeah. Do you know when it's due? No. It will be, like, probably after summer. After summer. Yeah. Let's say awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I... <laughs> no, I like it. Uh, and I mentioned in the, in the, this is amazing. The intro, more number ones than any other British female artist, and it's one of those things. We just, I know. Because you're like, people at home, people at home will hear me say it and kind of go, "That can't be true." Jess Glynn's only been around a wet weekend, but it, Google I, it. It's true. I genuinely feel like it's such a, a weird title to have because I feel like I've just started. It's so strange, and I'm so grateful, obviously. But yeah, it's so weird. So it's, weird. But it's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. No, I'm honestly so grateful. Because what are you at? You're at six or seven? S six. Six. But this could be seven. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl Cole's going. I'll oh, oh. never catch her now. <laughs> she might come back. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, thank you very much, because that was an exclusive performance for us. It was, we yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bad. And uh, good luck with the album. Yes, Glenn, everybody. Brilliant. Uh, listen, very quickly, uh, that is really it. We do have time uh, for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who is there? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, lovely. And what do you do, Elizabeth? Uh, I'm a speech and language therapist. Wow. And uh, where are you based? I'm based in Prague, but I'm from Swansea. You're based in Prague? Mm. Wow. Yeah, come okay. a long way. Are you just here on holidays? Um, I'm actually here for my dad's 80th birthday. Oh, lovely. Well, happy birthday to him. Uh, what's your story? So, uh, my sons were three and five, and we were invited as a family to my husband's uh, boss's house. And he's a very... Uh, proper man and it was all very um very nice so we go uh, to the house it's a beautiful house and uh we go into the kitchen where his wife prepared marrow stuffed with mint so i thought oh my god the kids are not gonna eat this so i whispered to my eldest son said james if you eat this i'll give you a pound tell your brother and don't ask for ketchup. So we sit down. <laughs> sit down. Good parenting. Good. Very good parenting. Uh, so Pay stand, them. Stands up, he welcomes us, the marrow's on the table, and he says, enjoy your meal. At which point, my younger son, Philip, looks at me across the table and says, clear as a bell, Mummy, is it true? Will you really give me a pound if I eat this? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have ketchup? I'm going to still do the flip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we've got both the story yeah. and the flip. We've got the story and the flip. Yes. Yeah, but good parenting. You've taken notes, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I've made them. Uh, who's up next? Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what's your name? My name's Sophie. Sophie, lovely. And where are you from, Sophie? Uh, London. London. And what do you do? I'm a sexual health nurse and a lecturer in nursing. Leave it. Oh. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh. never visited an office in my life! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is the story about anyone on the couch? Uh, uh, off you go with the story. OK, I was doing a clinic one day, and one of the <laughs> male doctors came and asked me if I'd chaperone him while he examined a female patient. 
So I went in with him, <laughs> and um, we got the patient on the couch, and everything was fine. Oh, okay. And um, he started to examine her, and it all went a bit quiet. And he said, um, she had symptoms for a couple of weeks, so um, you know, he was having a look. And he said, oh, um, there seems to be something in your vagina. And she went, oh, really? And he started pulling with the forceps, and it was like Paul Daniels' magic show. <laughs> and it just kept coming and coming and coming. And what she was it? The most massive pair of granny knickers in her vagina. <laughs> and she just denied all knowledge of how or when they got there. <laughs> I'm letting her walk, because that's a brilliant, brilliant choice. I don't understand it. It's amazing. It's going to be the flags of the world. I know. It's like the least oh, sexy... Oh, in Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> I was it just going to be like an extra large condom or something. <laughs> no, I like that it was the least sexy magic show in the world. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ridley, one more, one more. This is the last one, last one. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Lena. Lena, lovely Lena. And uh, where are you from? Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. And what do you do, Lena? Um, I actually gave up work to look after my grandchildren. Oh, well done, you. Uh, off you go with the story. Uh, well, a few years ago, I used to be a, a carer in an elderly care home, and uh, they used to have hens and cockerels in the grounds. And this one cockerel used to get out of the pen every day and come up to the window and tap on it, and uh, cockerel all day long, and it used to drive <laughs> us mad. Well, I nicknamed it Paxo, and this particular day, I was sitting with lo four lovely little ladies, and Paxo, as true form, come up to the window, tapping on it, and... Um, and that we was all moaning about him, and I said, oh, for goodness sake, Paxo, if you don't shut up, I'm going to chop you up and put you in a pie. And with that, I promptly said to the old ladies, have you ever tasted cock? <laughs> <laughs> Not realising what I'd said, um, I, 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 was, I was replied with a pardon. So then I went, have you ever tasted cock? <laughs> then I realised what I'd said is that they all looked at me horrified, and I quickly just said, it probably just tastes like chicken. And I couldn't <laughs> Do more, Peter. Do more. Well done. Uh, well done, everyone. If you'd like to join us on the show, and have a go on that website, you can. Just contact us via website at this very address. And that is it for tonight. Please say thank you to all of my guests. Jess Glean, everyone. Johnny Vegas. Amelia Fox. And Mr. Stephen Mangan. Join me next week with pop legend Joan Armatrading, actor John.